Okay. Why I haven't read this journal up to now, I don't know, but here it is. It's from 220. That's not that old. Find your way through the maze. What is truth? And uh, it's got some links in it, but they will be over on Scribed. Click over to the transcripts. A lot of times I don't tell you, but I do, you know, if I mention things often enough, I'll put in a link for you. So check it out. Okay. So we're accepting things. We're accepting that things are falling away all over the place. And that's grand, actually. You know me. I view it only as positive, no matter how negative seeming it can feel at times. Well, then again, I, I have no problems with challenges or, or difficulties or uncomfortable things. To me, that too is a part of life. Again, I see all of this as only positive from an overall view or perspective. How many are with me in this? There's a question. If we get too into things, if we're too interested, too focused, that means we're not with ourself. We're with the thing. We've poured ourselves into the thing. We have identified with it. That's the most uncomfortable spot to be in because then you're subject to whatever's going on with that thing. And you're so much more than that. So anyway, getting back to this. Okay. So many want a utopian scenario. The truth they want is purely perfect. And this is their vision of things. Now I used to be there. I know. You just think, well, it's God. It's perfect. That's how it is. You know, there's some unquestioned thought and assumptions there. Now, since anything is possible, they could be correct. At this point, I don't see it that way, so I just go on what works now here for me. <laughs> what else can we do, huh? I think the, the main call, the main cry, if I would make such a thing, would be for each one to get sufficiently grounded in self so as to be able to do what I'm doing here, go by your own truth. And that's one thing, as a for instance, George Cavasilis is really good about. Everybody has a specialty. Everybody has something that they've really got right on. And, and when they speak it, you feel it. This does not mean that truth herself is flexible, infinitely malleable. Not at all. That is a mind response to what amounts to a heart thing. And I don't want to go there. Stick with heart, with your own center, in other words. You have much dredging up work, we all do, yet to do. Or we would not still have a physical presence. Now, that's probably 98% true. I suppose there are some perfected beings here just kind of walking around looking like they need to be going through all of this. It is not your own, quote unquote, personal work, for there really are no such things as individuals or persons. Then it is the work of the collective. Whatever, the dredging up work is there to be done. Once you've balanced your own crap, you will find yourself working on the crap that is for the collective. We're, we're crap handling machines, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> the work is there to be done. And let us not be afraid. See, we've been taught that we're these little bitty things. Oh my God, if you're trying to go along with the transcript to this one, forget it. I'm just all over the place. There is much facing of fear we are called on to do, my friends. Whatever your personal boogeyman, do know that you will be facing it. If not now, then later. It's unavoidable if you would be wed to Lady Truth. There is no way out or around or over, no dodging of any kind. We must wade through the muck as it presents itself. So let's just get on with it, okay? You have the courage, you see. You are divine. Have you contacted that part of you yet? Touch down with it? 
it is all in our forgetting of true identity that we've been able to be misled and played with. Had we but known and then stood firmly in our own center, our own truth as it can be called, we could never have been messed with in so many ridiculous ways. And that's how it seems as we're waking up. Well, don't let such things hold you back any longer. Find center and stand in it. No matter what in it, you too will find you are invincible. Again and again, you will find you have no real idea of just who you truly are. But that's quite all right. For in the finding, you are thus led that much closer to your own inner reality, your native divinity. Do you see? The challenges do that. Let us respect and get a, a better sense of truth, real truth, right at the start of this. Nothing but nothing can withstand the truth, capital T. Things may seem to win out over it, but they will all fail and fall in the sands of time. Truth itself will never be conquered. Anything at all that goes up against her is bound to eventually fall. And this is an age for that. Things, whole worlds and ages come and go, but not truth. She is eternal. Even beyond eternal, truth is wholly divine. Now, at center, at heart, you are truth. You stand witness to that. You are divine. This is the reality of identity that will always stand. Thus, if you ally yourself with it, that's a good beginning. You won't really feel you are truth itself until all the dross is washed away, full transmutation accomplished. Meanwhile, you can truthfully stand by her side while we still have this sense of duality. This is your current truth. Do you see? We must have full integrity in our now moment. I just listened to the latest Dimitri Halley video. It was on apocalypse, defined as exposure of truth. And as usual, very well done. It exposes how mind is running people around in circles and how they latch on to this or that popular philosophy and yet they use it and they are used by it and they still misunderstand. It was a bit difficult to listen to for I truly want all who desire their freedom to have it. The reality is likely different. You know, unfortunately, not all will have it. And he helps us face that. Many are not willing to do the work involved to face and integrate the shadow to come into perfect balance of the yin and the yang. And this is not one without a price. And it feels like it's a slicing off of a part of the self that we're doing here. It hurts. The price is your current identity, your sense of that, whatever that is. Only those willing to give up everything are in the very best position to win out unto naked truth. You don't have to be there, but you're in the best position if you are. For the rest, it will be some mind game or another until they get tired of that. Though their seeking be real enough, their level of surrender just isn't there yet. He is right. Now, actually, that is me saying that, my interpretation of his work. And I don't totally see things as he does or as anyone else does. Yet, when I set aside how I see them, I can see through his eyes and the accuracy of what he says. Yet, to speak in any broad generalities is always dangerous, such as speaking about 
New Agers or any such broad group, any group, I mean, you know, Republicans, uh, liberals, uh, atheists, whatever, you know, there is such a wide variety of those who adopt these various belief groupings that nothing can be said that will be accurate for all of them. In reality, there's no such thing as a group. I suppose it is in this that I place my hope that my understanding is sufficient so that even if I am one who practices being only in now, that I am not cutting off the shadow or trying to kill it in this manner, which is what Dimitri suggests. Being in now and also in watch and observe mode is the best way to be with whatever is present. It is my experience that the shadow makes itself known this way in your now, so that we may then sit with whatever it is that arises, uncomfortable or not. To me, this is not running away. But I realize, see, when, whenever you say something like, all, uh, you know, believing in now equals X, Y, Z, uh, you're, you're bound to be wrong. You're going to be right for some few people, but broad generalizations just don't work. There's too much variety in us for them to be able to work. That's one of the reasons communication is so hard. It seems to me there is not a single system in existence now or ever that cannot be misused and misunderstood. As long as there is mind, this will be the case. That's how it seems to me. Mind is just a tool having no vice nor virtue inherent in it. That comes with one's use of it, but not from the thing itself, not from mind. Mind is and remains the best tool for twisting things, however, par excellence. Thus, I don't set out to rehabilitate mind. It doesn't need it. Mind is what it is, and there is nothing wrong with it. That's like wanting to outlaw guns because some people use them to kill. Automobiles kill massively many more people than guns. Shall we outlaw them? That's the logic involved there. But a lot of people can't see it because they're so emotionally attached and identified to this view. This sort of logic, I posit, is the misuse of mind's abilities. Do you see? People kill not guns. And <clears throat> legislation won't work for no matter what. Criminals will always have guns. Facts have to be faced, but sleeping people are unwilling to be stripped of neat, cozy ideas and ideals. Well, I'm not talking to them. That's fine. I'm content that people should believe what they choose to. There's just a group of us that are sorting ourselves out from the rest. Now, each one comes into 3D with a mission. Mind involves communication or speaking. Oh dear, that's funny. This is mind involves communication or speaking. That's funny. Next comes, what crowd am I speaking to? And that makes a huge difference. For there is no one that can successfully, using the same words, speak to the whole. There's too much diversity there. And there's nothing wrong with diversity either. I'm not knocking that. I find it quite beautiful. I love to be shown differences. They're expansive. So just judging from what's happening with me, for it's not this mind writing the journals, it is now clear that I'm speaking to those in their last embodiment, their last 3D lifetime. 
Now that's a relief actually. Rather than feel the need to reach out to a, a broader crowd, which Teresa sometimes falls into, I can just be content that these words are meant for that particular crew. <clears throat> I come into this backwards. Do you see that? It will help you to better understand these writings if you see how their origin truly isn't mind. When they are written, they are just me working out my own stuff. Yes, they contain mention of others. And sometimes others are addressed directly. But that is not my intent. It's just part of the flow that appears. It pours itself out on the page. You know, 40 years ago when I started these journals, there was some of that. I hope you can trust that this is the case. How far have you disidentified or backed off from the form you wear and the mind you inhabit? Can you look out through other eyes? Can you be the tree, the cat, the table, the fly, perhaps? What is your identity? It is best that you find it. Go in search of it. You might want to start with Muji, who is very adept at at least leading people into it and away from mine. Now then again, if you feel you are over-identified with mind and its beliefs, then go to Byron Katie. She's my prescription for that. There's no sentence that you or anyone can say that is wholly true, including the one I just said. Truth is not containable within words. And if you don't yet fully know that, and I mean know it down to your toes, then spend some profitable time with her videos. She is truly illumined, and this is her specialty, as Muji's is leading people out of mind. What's your weakness? Can you point to it? Go in search of capital S self. And this is critical. It's not a step that can be skipped. You can't shortcut this, thinking you can go off and adopt some philosophy or another absent doing self-inquiry work. Good luck with that. You'll just self-deceive. Now, it's true that the waters are dangerous, laden with every sort of eddy and sandbar, current and whirlpool, floating flotsam and jetsam of this or that sunken ship. I still say, so what? That is nothing to you, to the one who you really are. You are divine. So... What has worked for me so far in navigating the various dangers is simply sticking to heart and doing so firmly. Don't let yourself be swayed. Mind wants to assess, to list, to catalog all the various dangers and then go and write tones on each one. Just as soon as you do that, ten more will appear. It cannot be exhaustively done due to time, which will keep bringing ever more dangers our way. That is a, a totally a mind game that many are lost within. I don't suggest you go that way. It is not necessary to know everything about all the latest discoveries or the latest plots and plans of the powers that were. If you will just stick to heart, what will result is that mind will be mastered. It will convert from something that has you firmly within its control to something that is completely subservient to you, to heart. This is a very grand journey. Books could be written about this alone. Well, this will happen for you. That's all I'll say. Maybe you'll write a book. It's a truly grand adventure, this, our last embodiment. We have maybe millions of them under our belt. Yet this one, finally, this one is truly the last, or it can be, if we will it so and if we are wise. That means sticking to heart. Heart is no cruel taskmaster, but heart is very demanding. It will demand of you all that you have, all that you have clung to. Total surrender will be accomplished along the way. Bit by bit, it will be called out 
from you. And as you stay in heart, you'll find it's not difficult at all. It only seems difficult to mind. And if you can back off enough, you can see this. And once you see it, it's an oh my God moment. You mean it's not hard for me? No, it's not hard for you. It's only the mind. We all have the inner tutor within. And I won't characterize that one. Just know it speaks with the still small voice. It is there within you. Many promises have been made before our time about those who find their way into the inner kingdom, what I call the kingdom of heart. Even Jesus said the kingdom is within. I have found those promises to be true. And that's not to say they're with no cost. What is the price? The price is everything that is unreal within you. Even if it seems real right now. All that hides in the folds of your auric garment there, A-U-R-I-C. All deceit. We trick ourselves. Have you noticed? Well, we do, and mind cannot be trusted. Trust only heart and source or God or spirit, however you say that. Withdraw your trust from everyone and everything else, including your self, your, your mind. Don't think either that you'll suddenly be perfected. You'll wake up one day and presto, zappo, there you are. Even if some really great and grand experience should come to you and your consciousness inexplicably be raised, that is no end to things. How can it be in the midst of infinity and eternity? The coin of endings on its other side is beginnings. You can see this, right? So don't look for any grand ending, for anything to come in and mop it all up for you. No such thing. Finally, do what you can to let go of all expectations. And that's kind of what I was just talking about there. That's a really tall order, I know. I hear you. Still, as long as we're having expectations, we're not truly in now. We're off in time somewhere. Time is mind. Desires are also mind. No need to destroy mind. That's not being pointed to here. Learn instead to live with it to put it in its proper, subservient, very useful place. One day, it will dissolve on its own, just like your 3D body when it's no longer useful. All doing is at an end for you. Can you hear that? Are you ready to embrace it? Are you willing and ready to be danced, not knowing what the steps are just ahead? It's a strange way to live, and you will make mistakes. We all do. Are you up for that? Or do you have some artificial notion of perfection that I'm not illumined unless everything I do is perfect? that that's not a lumen master because everything he or she does isn't perfect? Or do you still nurture such an ego that you must always be right or you'd rather be silent? Let go, let go, let go. What else can I say? And be alert. Good day.